So another overview of some of the new modules that were added to the VCV library lately. Also today, all the modules we will look at are available for free. We will start with Hive from Sturmelder, which is a really interesting sequencer. It's a four channel sequencer. And each channel has its own clock input and you can rotate and change the sequence um, for each of the channels. So if you connect the CV output anywhere, I have here just a mult, it will activate the channel. So first of all, in the right click menu, we can change how big or small, which is really nice, big or small the sequence will be. We can randomize it, we can randomize the, uns the certainty, we can clear it, I can enter notes just like this. Really interesting, if I click it again, it adds also probability. And if I go to edit mode, I can see the four sequences. First of all, I can change their starting point. So I can have each sequence start at a, at a different point. I can change the direction, so where they will go, uh, the turn mode. So when you uh, uh, trigger the turn function, how they will turn, and also the range. So each sequence can have a different range. So you can use one for sequencing, one for modulating, whatever. And there is also ratcheting. So whenever you activate the probability, the certainty, you can uh, it activates also ratcheting. You can turn it on and off for each of the channels if you want or don't want it. If you just want probability or you want also ratcheting, and you can set also the ratcheting probability again for each of the channels, which is which is really cool. So if you hit run here, for example, you can see it's going in interesting directions, and I can turn it right. If I add another one. I can have another one that they, are, they can run in different ways. By the way, those are normal. So the turn trigger, uh, uh, <laughs> the turn trigger input here is normal to the other one. So if I connect a different, this is really cool. Connect a different uh, trigger, you can see this sometimes. So here I have an example. I have here something ready. What happened to the graphics? Okay, so here I have one hive. You can see I have the four channels running everywhere. Um, I have also different clock here's uh, cl different clocks here. <laughs> the first one, the first channel is triggering or sequencing the percussive vibration. And I'm using here the Revin quantizer to quantize everything. So this is how the percussive vibration will sound like. Right, so I'm using one channel for pitch and one channel for modulation. I'm sequencing or uh, a modulation to the decay, to the decay of the percussive vibration. Oh, nice. Whoa. <laughs> Very cool. Another channel of the sequencer is sequencing bleak. Um, from Vult going through tangents and what? Let's listen to this for a second. And you can hear I have an LFO on the cutoff point of the filter, but I'm sequencing the LFO um, with the same pitch information, which means that higher notes will have a quicker or faster um, filter movement. using a different clock, it's slower, you can see this is the, what is this color, cayenne, I don't know, this one, the <laughs> bright blue. Okay, another um, channel is sequencing the wave oscillator from Blemsoft. Which is going through a lot of reverb. Right, so you can have different up to four channels, which is really interesting. And each of the channels you can set up differently. And it doesn't have to be just for pitch. Here I'm using it also to sequence uh, drums from Proc. So I have the four channels. Um, not only triggering the drums, but also modulating or sequencing their sound. 
And what I'm doing here, um, I'm also sending two of the trigger outputs to a clock, um, clock divider just to get less uh, triggers. This is for the clonk module and the snare. And on the hi-hat, they are also uh, ratcheting. Maybe you can hear it. Let's do this. Oh, yeah. So you can hear there is ratcheting on the hi-hat. Also on the snare a bit, it makes it a bit more wonky. So yeah, really nice uh, sequencer, high from Sturmelder, again, uh, nice for pitch, nice for modulation, nice for triggers, for triggering drums or other percussive sounds. Uh, yeah, go check it out. Okay, so we have another module from Sturmelder, actually we have another one later on, and um, this is called Macro and it's perfect for creating a macro controller you can use it to map controls also to send cv if you want also to send offset also to use external um, sources external signals so here for example we have 8 vert and um, just for the demonstration um, i can map for example a control and then with this uh, knob here i can control it now in the right click menu of each of those and buttons of those map buttons, we can change a few different parameters. So first of all, we can unmap it. We can also locate and indicate, which is quite cool. So if you forgot uh, what it is mapped to, if I click it, you can see it goes to where it is. And also it blinks. If I move it, for example, the 8 vert here, and I'm zoomed in and I forgot, oh man, what it is. First of all, I can see in the tooltips 8 vert channel 1 gain, but I can also locate and indicate it moves there and it's blinking. So this is quite a cool feature. It has, um, um, it's available also on the other modules from Sturmelder that, uh, that you can map um, parameters to. Anyway, we can also add slew limiting. So look, when I move the knob, you can see it's, it moves smoother, let's say, it takes a while. And I can also change the range. So first of all, I can change the starting point. Have a look on the 8 vert. You can see I can say, for example, I want it to start here. And I want it to end somewhere here, let's say. So now the range, even though I'm moving the knob all the way, the range is smaller. And this is great because for each of those channels, for each of those buttons, for each of those uh, mapping parameters, mapping buttons, I can set different settings so for example for the second one i want to have the full range so with the same movement you know i can move a different parameter if it's uh, sending it to a delay like we will look uh, soon enough and um, reverb changing all sorts of parameters you can have exactly the ranges you want and with the move of a knob <laughs> you can control different parameters at once just like a macro controller also you can send cv if you want and also this, if you right click it, which is really interesting, again, you can set all of the um, all of the different parameters, the output voltage. Yeah, you have also presets, you can set it also to be inverted. And you can use also external signals, so you can send external signals to multiple parameters if they can be mapped, if not with CV, whatever. So here I have an example, a few examples. Um, Okay, so let's have a look. First of all, another thing I want to mention is the Hexaquark, which is also a new module, um, but I'm not going to showcase it here. I have a whole video about it. It's very uh, deep and complex. It's an amazing uh, trigger sequencer, but not only also CV, CV sequencer. You can do all sorts of things with it, um, but it's commercial, first of all, and also it's quite deep. So a short video is not enough for this. So if you are interested, there will be a link to the full video on Hexaquark. So what I have here, I have here Hexaquark triggering and sequencing the percussive vibration, which will sound like this. And it's also going, if I unmute this already, it's also going through a delay through Chronoblob, but first of all through the VCA from VCV, which means that for now it's not going anywhere until I control the 
uh, macro controller I prepared here. By the way, glue is also from Sturmelder. You can create labels. It's not new, but you can create labels with it. So here I have a label of uh, perk, so I know what it is. And here the other voice that we will look at in a second. So I have, first of all, the CV output going to the VCA. So with the, uh, I will show you this in a second. With this knob, I can open the VCA and send this voice also to a delay. But I want also that this voice will be brighter when it goes to the delay. So I have it mapped, first of all, to the bend. This will add this click in the beginning of the sound to the FM depth, which will make it brighter. And to the uh, source, to the oscillator source, it will go, it will open the noise. So it will be even brighter, but I have them in different ranges. So this noise, for example, will not go all the way. Also, the FM will not go all the way. So let's have a, let's have a look. Um, when I turn the knob, have a look at the percussive vibration. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, indeed. So I can do this slightly. I can do this. So I can make the voice brighter and I send it to a delay, which is amazing uh, for a macro controller to have for all sorts of things. Here I have another example. I have here the Organ 3 from Squinky Labs going through the Kumba for some extra crunch and the uh, uh, Ripples, the liquid filter from uh, Mutable Instruments. It has a built-in VCA, so I'm using this VCA and this is going again through Chronoblob. This time I'm sequencing and enveloping <laughs> and this voice with hexaquark so i have the trigger output and also the envelope output hexaquark is also built in envelopes that you can use sequencing this voice it will sound like this let me bring the macro controller here down so we can see exactly what's going on so here what i have it mapped to I have it mapped to three bars so again it will change the sound with one knob and I have it controlling also the cutoff point so it will open the cutoff point and it will also the CV output is also going to the feedback amount and also here I have it starting already from 31.2 percent which means that there is already some feedback and when I open the attenuator the attenuator or the snob can add and change the sound in different ways all together with one knob and now I don't even have to look if you have like a live performance or something I don't even have to look at the whole screen if you have a big patch doesn't matter if you look at it or not you don't know anyway what's going on so I can just look at the macro controllers and I know exactly what is what There are endless possibilities with this, with creating macro controls for all sorts of things. Send effects like I'm doing here, but all sorts of different things, changing voices, changing sequences. Really interesting. Um, okay, so this was macro again, Stormeldo. So here we have a new CV sequencer from uh, DHE. It's called Scannibel. And there are three versions, as you can see, uh, with four steps or up to four steps, up to eight steps and up to 16 steps. If I zoom in here a bit, um, so you run this sequencer with a, a ramp, for example, to get go, to, to go from one to 16. If I change it to an um, inverted ramp, it will go in reverse. If I set it to a sine wave, you can see how it moves. So it depends on the incoming signal. A smooth signal it will depend um, on this signal and this is how it will move from one step to another you can use sample and holder so you can sequence the sequencer if you wish um, which is also quite cool so what we have here we have in this case 16 steps for each of the step you can change the level so for example if I take all of the levels down look at the scope already we have the output here on the scope you can see that there is nothing going on and for each of the channels I can change the level so you can create your own envelopes you can create your own modulation with different amount of steps bipolar unipolar you can change it here and so this is really cool so let's say for example I want step three to go all the way up and I want here to have something like this so I can create 
really interesting modulation. Imagine, uh, I don't think I did it in the example, but I imagine connecting it to a VCA, for example, to controlling a level, gating a level, uh, gating a, a voice. Now you can change the shape also. So you can make this a bit more rigid or a bit smoother. Again, uh, everything is here on the scope. If I zoom in a bit, maybe you can see the different shapes. We can also change the, how is it called, the relative duration, so it will be a bit quicker or a bit slower depending on the incoming signal, of course. This can also go into audio rates, so you can use this also as a, an interesting oscillator to create interesting oscillations, interesting um, shapes. Now, another interesting feature here is that you have three external auxiliary inputs that you can send... Um, external signals and on, on certain steps output those signals. So for example on step 5 I can change it instead of level I can change it to input A and then what's coming in input A on step 5 will come out or I can change this instead of track and hold I can change it to sample and hold and then this input will be sampled. So it will not go out it will be sampled and this will be the step. Um, another interesting thing here we have the clock the clock output and this is again according to the relative duration so you can use this to gate or to trigger or to clock other things in your patch and we have the step number in this case we go from 1 to 16 again you can see the differences here if i zoom in a bit you can see the differences in length this is because of the duration of each step so you can use this if you are not using a saw wave, for example, like I'm doing here. Uh, let's do this, for example, as a sine wave. You can see we get a different shape because this is how the steps are moving. Also, this, of course, you can use at audio rates and create really interesting um, sounds and oscillators. So let's have a look at uh, an example I have here. Let me just take the volume down. For a second. Okay, so what I have here? I have here one scanny bell. I have, I'm using the 8 channel one just for simplicity's sake. So I have he I have heat. I have it <laughs> modulating the FM amount of terror form here. Let's have a listen to this. Oh yeah. By the way, I'm using Val uh, Valhalla Supermassive here as my reverb. So I'm sequencing, you can see this also here on the scope, I'm sequencing this FM, but what I have, I have another LFO, I have here another LFO with a different um, frequency going to input A, and I told you before, I showed you before that you can send um, auxiliary uh, signals, external signals to each of the steps. So here step one will output this LFO, and this is what you see. If I take it a bit up, you can hear it. It has like the. Right, so you can you can create really interesting modulation like this sequence modulation, sequence amplitude, which is also quite cool. So this is the first voice I have here. Another, ah no, first of all, how I'm sequencing the pitch of this voice. So I'm using another scannable here and I'm sending it through a VCA just to attenuate it a bit. I can do this also from the module itself, from Scannable, but I wanted to use it for other stuff as well. So what I'm doing here, I'm just attenuating it a bit, and then I'm sending it through a quantizer, and this is sequencing the pitch of this voice, which is really nice. Hypnotic, hypnotizing. Okay, now I have here another voice, I have here Bleak, uh, going through tangents, and I'm using, okay, so what I'm doing here, I'm sending, you can see this here, the blue trace on the scope, this is, uh, like I showed you before, the step uh, output, so it outputs according to the steps, it outputs a stepped voltage according to the steps. So this I'm going, I'm sending to Kinks, Utilities from uh, Mutable Instruments, it has uh, an analog logic section that you can uh, combine different signals. So here I'm combining this stepped voltage with the sequence I used before for Terraform. And I'm using the minimum output and you can see it here. 
this is the pink trace, this is the result, and also this I'm sending through a VCA and a quantizer. So this is how this will sound like. Right, so it's connected, it's related to the first sequence um, because of this analog logic module, but it's, it is a bit different. It is a bit more bassy also. Which is really, really nice. Okay, another thing I'm doing here, I have another scannable 8. And this is fun, this is something really fun. So I have here again a sequence programmed um, and this is again sequencing, in this case, an FM voice, but I have here two steps. So I have two different sample and holds going to A and B. Again, the auxiliary signals that I can route to each of the steps. So step three has input A and step six has input B which means that on those steps I will always get, or uh, uh, more often I will get a random note. So I have the main sequence, which is repetitive, but I have two steps that will get random notes, which means that I have something with a bit more movement. So if, opalach, so if we listen to this, oh man, listen to the notes. Why I'm getting this sort of ratcheting in this uh, step because I have it set to track and hold and not sample and hold. So track and hold will let the the A signal through. It will not sample it, it will let it through as long as the step is active. And because I'm using a, a clock from a different sequencer, from the first sequencer, we will get those ratchets here and there. Yeah, so this is a really fun module to experiment with. You can do all sorts of things. Um, it looks intimidating at first, but after five, 10 minutes, you will get it. Um, it's not so complicated. Um, and there's a really good manual also um, in the website from DHE. Um, yeah, so Scannable. Okay, so this is another fun one. This is the dual neuron from Stellis, I guess. And this is a crazy one. This will allow you to combine and mix and multiply different waveforms um, or different signals actually together and create really interesting results. You can combine, um, uh, of course, oscillators. You can combine modulation. You can combine sequences. You can combine all sorts of things and create interesting results. So here, for example, as you can see, if we can see the scope maybe a bit closer, I have two oscillators going to the, uh, input uh, one and two from neuron, neuron, I want to say neutron all the time, but neuron A, and I have two basic oscillators going to the neuron, neuron B, I will stop, I will just say the lower section. <laughs> so this is the lower section, this is the upper section, okay? And these are being multiplied and combined, and I'm using the sum output, for example, to create this unique waveform. And of course, I can change it. As you can see, it, it can have a sort of a PWM sort of movement. I can create all sorts of weird things. You don't have to understand what's going on in this case. I mean, what everything is doing. You just have to experiment. Everything has CV inputs, by the way. You just have to experiment and see how things react and change the sound and change everything here. You can amplify, you can offset, and you have different outputs. You have the sum, you have the difference, you have the maximum, you have the minimum, and so on. So you can create really interesting, this is cool, you can create really interesting waveforms and all sorts of things. So here down again, I have a few examples. So first of all, I'm using two honor modules, honor oscillators from Nano, um, really nice oscillators. As you can see with the dual neuron, <laughs> creating a really unique wave shape, waveform, wave shape here, as you can see here on the scope. Let's listen to this also. Oh yeah. 
really cool. I'm actually, I'm using two. I'm using the sum and the difference, and they are a bit different from one another, and uh, it's nice in the stereo field also. I'm using slap and freak to sequence this a bit. I'm sequencing with the stochastic sequencer. This is not a new module, um, but it is really interesting. You can, ch you should check it out from Shebang. Stochastic sequencer. So stochastic, stochastic sequencer. Really interesting. Okay, so let's go back to the dual neuron. Look at the waveforms we are getting. change it, offset, here I'm modulating it also with an LFO, right, so you can create really interesting results, for example, for VCOs, for audio, but here down I'm also doing something like this, so I'm using the stochast stochastic sequencer and I'm using the modulo sequencer and I'm uh, um, combining them with the dual neuron into something new. So first of all the modulo sequencer is going already to blick, um, to the first blick and the second blick is getting the difference from those two sequencers. So we have a different sequence going on. This I'm sequencing with, <clears throat> sorry, with one pattern uh, from JW, really interesting um, logic module that you can create really interesting. Everything is really interesting today. You can create a really interesting, <clears throat> sorry, patterns and everything. Okay, so let's have a listen to this. So again, one time I'm combining um, audio rate signals, the second time I'm combining sequences and creating all sorts of things. Again, everything has a CV input here, so you can modulate everything, create endless variations, if you will. Which is quite, quite cool. Again, you don't have to understand exactly what's going on, just to experiment with it. This was the dual neuron. Okay, so this is another one from Sturmelder. This um, is not your regular module, so it will not produce any sound. It will not modulate anything, but it's really, really cool. This will change the behavior of the module, uh, modules explorer or browser. So first of all, in the right-click menu, you can choose if you want to go to the older browser, the one that we had uh, in 0.6, in the VCV version uh, 0.6, if I click it, and I right-click to select a module, opalach, hey, <laughs> we have the old, as you can see, the old browser, if you like it, if you want to use it, if you don't want all of those uh, pictures or images or whatever, you can have it, again, there is the favorites also, so this is really cool, you can use it, and you can just add modules as you wish. Or if we go back to the new one, first of all, if I right click, you can already see it looks a bit different. It's a bit bigger because we have the preview size. We can change the size of the preview here, which is amazing. Um, this is really nice. Okay, we can also change uh, between what will uh, show, um, what will be shown, the recently updated, so the ones that are newer, the last used, those are the last used, uh, last modules I used, for example, or the ones I use the most, which are those one here, those ones here, quite cool, or just random, which is also quite interesting if you just want to experiment with something, you can just hit random and you have random modules to experiment with, or by name. Also here you have favorites, so now I have those as my favorites, for example, not so many, <laughs> I'm still working on it, but you can have your favorites um, section in the right-click menu, if you click a, uh, right -click a module, you can have only, for example, this developer, so if I hit filter by count modular, I see all of the modules from count modular, 
if I click it and I, uh, I can go directly to the website, to the manual from the browser itself, I can also add it to my favorites and I can hide it. So for example, if there is a module you don't want to see when you look for, let's look for VCO. If there is something here that you know that you will not use and you don't want it to pop up every time you hit VCO, you can just hide it and it will be hidden from the browser. So again, this module from Sturmelder will not create any sound, will not modulate or sequence anything, but it's really useful. Consider it as a sort of a bonus, I guess. And this was the last module for today. Thank you again for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful. Uh, subscribe, like, comment, and cheers.